Hi, this is 365821 and this is a video for the hashtag year end BL. So this is kind of like a roundup video for a readathon that was hosted by Boys Love Party, I think, on Twitter. Um, and she, I think it's she, she set up um, lots of different fun activities with bingo boards and point systems and things like that. But in the end, for me, it was kind of just like, well, you've got a lot of um, be able to get through. Why don't you just hammer on home? So um, there was also the hashtag 25 days manga running concurrently. So I have been reading basically for both of them anyway. So this is kind of like a roundup for both of those. But at the same time, I've continued on after the 25 days. So this is just for the year end BL. Um, hashtag. So, um, as you can see, and I've already done several videos about these already, um, this is number six. So, I started off when the hashtag 25 days of manga was starting, so uh, was the hashtag year end BL around the same time. So, I was finishing off number six. So, at that start of the hashtag, that's kind of what I was reading. So, I've already done the posts. You can see them. I wax lyrical about number six. I'm really happy I was able to read this this year. Um, it's been sitting in my drawers for a wee while, so um, it's kind of something that I can take off and say I've done and I'm really happy about it as well. So, proud of this one. The next title I read for the hashtag year end BL was Pure Heart. I've also done a video about this one as well, so if you want to watch that, it's um, I'll probably make a link or something, or you can just go and find it. I don't have that many videos on my channel, so yeah. It's wonderful, I'm really happy to have it in my collection. Just like number six, I'm really happy to have them in my collection. Um, this one, I'm really happy though because I really held out for a long time until it was only like six pounds so oof, what a great price I'm really happy that I was like no it's fine it'll come down at some point although to be fair I you know I probably would have just paid anything for it actually well that's not true I held out for a reason so I feel good that I did anyway it was a good read I'm just disappointed that June only published one volume so um, if that's what you're thinking, you think, oh, that might be nice. It is, it's lovely, but uh, only one volume. So happy to have it in the collection though. The other thing is I didn't actually have it on my TBR for very long. It's kind of one that came in in November. I read it pretty much straight away. So that kind of shows my enthusiasm for it, I think. Whereas number six was in my drawer for a year, practically. Pure Heart was like literally just on my bedside table straight away in red so uh, yeah some of them stay on your TBR for a long time some of them aren't on your TBR at all they basically just come in get opened and read straight away so this was one of them pure heart the next thing I read for the hashtag year and BL was love in limbo volume 2 but I also reread volume 1 just to make sure I was refreshed I've also done a video on this because I've just been doing lots of videos for the hashtag 25 days of manga so um, yeah it's great I'm really glad I've got it in my collection I have had it in I think I got love in limbo maybe around August or September um, so I've had it for a while and I just haven't read them so I read volume I read volume one in August, so I must have got Love and Limbo around September or October and just haven't bothered reading it yet. So, yep, um, didn't stay too long on my TBR, which is good. So, um, really pleased to have this one read. It was a lovely story. I will reread it at some point, but I think I'll give it myself some time to forget the story and then come back to it. The next one I read was I Hear the Sunspot. Once again, I've made a video for this. Most of the ones at the start of um, this hashtag that I was using, uh, I've made videos of, but some of the later ones I haven't. So, yep, I Hear the Sunspot. It's fabulous, it's great. It's been on my TBR since I got it. Um, and I finally cracked and have read these three volumes. So, I will read 
the fourth one in the new year. I'm looking forward to that um, once I've gone through what I'm reading just now. So something to look forward to and when the fifth volume comes out as well. That should be good as well. I do heartily recommend it. It's been really lovely to read. It's such a wonderful title. So yeah, a good recommendation. From the sublime to the ridiculous, The King of Debt, I've also done a video for and it was pretty ridiculous. Um, I don't really recommend it. No, not really. Unless you're collecting BL like me, then yeah, get it because it'll make you feel good to have it in the collection. But um, no, not really. One for <laughs> not really a recommendation. Very throwaway title in that respect. How can I say no to BL? I, I won't, but if you are not all that inclined, definitely not, um, uh, <laughs> not a great title, but okay to have. Strangely enough, lots of people have, um, watched the video for some reason. <laughs> this one seems like it must have been entertaining. My, my loathing of it. I didn't hate it. I didn't. I just didn't really enjoy it. King of Debt. Once again from the ridiculous to the sublime, uh, The Bride Was a Boy. Not something that I usually read, which is non-fiction, but um, I absolutely loved it. I just thought it was wonderful, very informative, and I felt very good about reading it because I have had this on my TBR since I bought it last year sometime. I think actually I bought it mid-year. 2018 so yeah it's been about a year and a half or something whenever it came out actually I think I got it quite quickly um, I think I got it as part of um, a, like a three for two deal in a comic shop so I, I saw it and I thought oh that looks interesting and it was I was really pleased that I got it but um, yeah I really enjoyed it and it's a nice title to have I do recommend this one as well Next one is another one I've done a video on, Escape Journey uh, by Ogaret Tanaka. This has not been on my TBR for that long because it's not been out for that long. It's kind of the same as The Bride Was a Boy, so I think I got the first volume about a year and a half ago and then the third volume I think came um, maybe about halfway through 2019. So I've had it sitting there for as a completed set for about I don't know, less than six months which is not bad for me <laughs> in terms of getting through your TBRs goes um, and it's one that I really wanted to read it was complete in three volumes so I knew that I could just um, sit down and plow through which is nice um, I really like when I can just sit and escape into a world for the duration of it as the mangaka has designed it so beautiful artwork heartbreaking story a little bit problematic as you know um, but uh, one that I'm really pleased that I was able to read and get through and I loved it I really like it it's a beautiful story yep so escape journey I like it I do recommend it but only to those who don't have too much of an issue with um, sexual assault it's very important that people are aware of that so glad to have it off my TBR so the next one I read for this hashtag was unsophisticated and rude, as I did mention. It is quite rude. Satoshi. Satoshi. I just feel for you. I kind of want to, you know, maybe I'll do like a, a fan fiction for Satoshi. I'll find out. That would be quite fun. I might do that like as a creative outlet in some way this year. 2020. Satoshi story. Ah, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Anyway, I do recommend it. It's fun <laughs> to read. Um, it's completely bonkers. And the ones that will follow are also kind of bonkers. Um, anything that is just like King of Debt, you know, a series of one shot or um, one off stories always seem to be um, lacking in quality storytelling. Occasionally you'll get one and be like wow that was amazing and so well put together for such a short page count but generally not they're pretty bonkers. Bonkers BL is <laughs> what's coming up. Anyway it starts off with unsophisticated and rude. 
So I told you it was bonkers, <laughs> sensitive pornograph. Um, just like on Sophisticated Rude, it's a series of um, like one shot stories. Um, sensitive pornograph is one that I'm actually incredibly happy to have in my collection, as much as it is bonkers. Um, and that's because it was so popular and because it does have um, like a OVA um, release and uh, yeah, I have watched it. It is ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bonkers. I actually don't find the manga anywhere near as uncomfortable and um, yeah, uncomfortable I think is how I would describe the OVA. Um, I don't find the manga anywhere near as uncomfortable. Um, there's lots of different stories in there. They're all kind of a bit... Mm, they were interesting. I'm really glad that I finally sat down and read it. Can I tell you about them? No, not really. I can't remember much other than the ones that they chose to make in the OVA because it's like seared into my my retinas. Uh, you know, once you've seen it, it can't be unseen. <laughs> but if you like this kind of thing and if you like the OVAs, and I, I do, I have them on the background all the time. Like people walk in, it's like, what on earth are you watching? <laughs> yeah, it's just my background noise. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to have it. I actually didn't pay a lot for this copy, so I'm actually really pleased. I don't, I can't remember how much it was, but I got it last year, not this year. So um, I'd have to go back and check. But I do remember that I was incredibly overjoyed to have a copy, because um, I think in the UK anyway, and this is the case, sometimes in the UK things are much more expensive to get hold of. So sensitive pornograph, an unfortunate title, which. Ashika uh, Sakura, the author, herself says was unfortunate because she's not very good at coming up with titles. I thought it was funny anyway. But yeah, sensitive pornograph was the next thing I... So the next one I read for the hashtag year end BL was Ze. I think that's how you pronounce it. Ze. Z? Ze? Ze. I'm thinking Ze would be what it would be by Yuki Shimizu, um, who's quite a prolific author. I think she did like Love Mode, which is quite um, popular as well. Lots of other things. And this is just volume one, and I was so happy to get volume one, so I was really pleased that it was on my like TBR, because uh, I'm also doing my reading BL challenge, as well as trying to do go through um, Manga Hoarder, Laura's um, challenges for 2019. And one of the challenges is to read the alphabet, so <laughs> this covers the Z's, um, and that's why it was on my TBR. So I read it. Um, I don't have volume two. There is a couple of volumes, and I think everyone else knows what those volumes are because they're hard to get hold of. Um, this is A to one, so I don't think we'll ever get, ever get more printed. Um, and the volumes are one to eleven, and I have actually quite a few of them, but it's just. I think I'm only missing like three volumes, but they're the volumes that are really hard to get hold of and very expensive. And I was really happy to, just to be able to get volume one for a really good price and really good condition. So, yep, this this year, ze, volume one has been read. Will I continue with it? No, not until I get the rest of the volumes. So, unfortunately, that's the end of ze for me. <laughs> Unless I get volume two. I don't have a volume two, so I need a volume two. That's on my to-get list. So the next one that was on my uh, TBR was Ambiguous Relationship by Masara Minase. I love Masara Minase. I think we need more of her work. And she does a lot of what I've just been complaining about massively, which is throwaway one-shots. Throwaway one-shots I think she is a master of. Can I remember what Ambiguous Relationship was about? No. Did I just read it a few days ago? Yes. Um, do I care? No. Will I pick this up again? Yes. In fact, this was brand new. You can see it's really good. It was covered in plastic, so I got a really good price for it. I don't think I overspent. And it was absolutely brand new. So I was the first one to um, <clears throat> break its spine. And um, I don't think I did. I think I, I kept it in good nick. So yeah, it was something that I've been wanting to read, thinking this would be one of her more in-depth, longer ones, but actually it's just lots of short stories, which, um, about ambiguous relationships. I think it was to do with, like, power dynamics, which isn't always a great one. 
<laughs> but something that seemed to be such a big thing back in the noughties. So yeah, um, hey, I love Master Aminase. I will read everything of hers. I think she's got great art style and some of her stories um, are quite interesting and deep. But can I tell you about them? No. Do I remember? No. <laughs> but will I still read? Yes. <laughs> so, ambiguous relationship. It was a good one. I just know that I enjoyed it and that's enough for me. So the next one I read for a year in BL is actually a reread. I couldn't help myself. After making the video, I just sat down and reread volume one. And I was like, no, stop it. You've got other things to read. Um, so this was a reread after I made the video of it. So yeah, I did add this onto my pile. So the second to last, but properly the last um, full manga that I've read this year for 2019, this will be the last one, is Intense Rain by Shinri Fuahua Shinri, uh, also published by June. And this was also a brand new title with the wrapping still on it that I'd kept um, and decided I was going to just, you know, unwrap and have a good read of. Um, I also got it for a good price as well, I think. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was like a reduced title on Amazon or something, so um, yeah, very happy to get. Uh, Shinri Fua, she's kind of got a very distinctive art style as well, very of that time period, um, but I really like her work. Uh, so the people on the front cover, um, if I can even remember, uh, Ryuji and Takaki, and it's basically about um, a guy who's a bit of a jerk. What is it with all these jerks? Um, so yeah, I've been reading a lot of jerks lately. <laughs> this um, jerk thinks, oh, there's some, you know, little cutie pie who's very innocent, probably hasn't ever done anything before, and he seduces him and has his way with him, one night stand, um, and for some reason he's like, oh, okay, he, he was actually quite good fun, he kind of tries to pursue him then afterwards, even though he's like, oh, you were just playing with me, okay, I don't want to have anything to do with you, which is the same thing to do, it's like, you're a jerk, I'm just gonna, you know, leave you now, okay? And he's like, oh, actually, now you're more interesting, because you don't want to be with me, so he pursues him, and ends up seducing him, they end up having a relationship, and then I think he cheats on him because it's like, oh well, you know, and he doesn't realise he's in love. Oh, well, too bad. You know what? That's what I think. And that's exactly what uh, Ryuji thinks as well. He's like, you're a douche, I'm away. So he leaves him, up and leaves, just as like, you know, screw you. To be fair, yeah, 100%. He's an awful guy. Takaki, what a dirk. Anyway, so years go by, time skip, love that. And, um... They're both teachers. <laughs> I really like actually. I really like teacher uh, stories, um, romances involving teachers who are with other teachers. I like those kind of stories generally, purely because I worked in a school, and so I can totally see it happening. Because I totally saw it happening. I don't know how many relationships there were between teachers and teachers, and I was at that prime age when people were like trying to. You know, older female teachers were, this is too much information, but older female teachers were to totally trying to, you know, set me up with some of the other staff. And it was like, what? Why? No, stop it. Let's just look from the sidelines. I'm telling you, that person with that person. It was like popcorn, you know? Munch, 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 munch. It was great. So it does remind me of that when I see teacher relationships happening. Because it's like, uh-huh, yeah, I saw that, yeah relatable. Anyway, so <laughs> back to Takaki and Ryuji. Takaki at this point has realised he was in love and let a good thing go and you know, when Ryuji ends up going to the school, it's like, oh I've got to really try hard and he needs to really make up his lack of communication, mistrust, totally understandable and he has to make a real effort to try and win him back and he does and that's great so it's a happy ending in the end um 
So yeah, I didn't mind it because it was actually quite substantial. You know, unlike a one shot, there's character development. There's a lot more plot. There's a lot more things going on. You have time to actually connect with a character, feel relatable, feel connection that you care for them. And then you, you know, get the payoff when they're happy in the end, which is the point of romance. So yeah, it's quite a substantial chunk of the book. There's only really two stories in the book and about two thirds of it is the Intense Rain story. So it was quite nice to sit there and just be taken on this little journey with this story. The second story, I swear to God, I'm not lying, Satoshi-san is in this. Obviously it's not the same Satoshi because it's Momoko Tenzin from Unsophisticated Rude and Shinri Fua. But there's a Satoshi in there, woo woo! Um, and he's the Uke, which I was kind of unsurprised about because, you know, I would have even thought for the Satoshi from the other story. I was like, yeah, I, I bet he could. Anywho, um, that was okay. It wasn't a great story. Um, it was uh, about a young guy I think he's still in high school, like maybe uh, like final year of high school and he ends up having a wild passionate night with um, one night stand with this guy who turns out to be Satoshi and, um, and then he goes to visit his brother who's living on his own and when he gets there who's in his brother's apartment is actually his one night stand who happens to be totally in love with his brother. Um, so yeah, that's where the, the kind of conflict is. The fact that his one night stand is actually totally in love with his brother. He's now totally in love with the one night stand. Can't stop thinking about him. And the only reason the one night stand really enjoyed it or went for him is because he reminded him of the brother. Ah! So that's the second story. It's fun how that plays out, but it's quite rushed compared to the first one. But I'm really happy that I got Shinri Fua's uh, work. I don't think there's loads of her work published, but I will try and get all of it anyway. But Intense Rain, it was a good one. I actually really enjoyed it. So yeah, I would recommend this one. Okay, so this is the last manga that I am reading for the hashtag year end BL. And that is also because as part of the hashtag 25 days of manga, I asked for a recommendation. I put up three titles, Gravitation, Loveless and The Heart of Thomas by Moto Hagio and this was the one that was chosen by everyone on Twitter so thank you to everyone who voted um, or retweeted or liked because um, yeah it was quite a good wee fun thing. I've never done one of them on Twitter before so um, it was fun to do and so I started reading but I've only just started um, so I haven't got into the story yet um, I know that it's a really great title, it's one of those sort of... I was talking to Dylan on Twitter about how it's like one of those classics because it's something that was old and it's very big and it's hardback and it's fancy and you feel like you need to, to, to culture yourself, to become a cultured... Uh, to become a cultured person you need to be able to read certain uh, works of art and this I think is a work of art rather than just hey it's a boys love title so this is the title that I'm just started reading and I will be going into 2020 with so it will be the first title I complete in 2020 and I'm gonna take my time over it most of the ones that I read because this was a readathon it and kind of with readathons you try and read as much as you can and often with BL, you read it and the next day you can't even remember what it was about. You just remember how you felt about it, whether it was annoying or if it was exciting or if it was pleasant enough, but you have no memory of. So there are some titles that are memorable, like I Hear the Sunspot or Escape Journey, that are informative, like The Bride Was a Boy, <laughs> or that are just absolute bonkers, straight up bonkers like King of Debt or Sensitive Pornograph. Um, the ones that make you laugh, like High School Life of a Fidanchi. Um, ones that you want to read for whatever reason. Um, but The Heart of Thomas is the one that I'm going to finish the year with for 2019. I'm really happy that uh, Boys Love Party uh, set up the year-end BL. It gave me a bit of a kick up the bum 
you know, a bit of a push to read more um, BL works that I've been putting off reading or ones that I have wanted to read but I needed to be in the right frame of mind or the right mood for. So uh, thank you very much for posting this readathon. Um, so I, I don't know, I haven't done points or anything like this, but I've gone through quite a few volumes. I wouldn't count Heart of Thomas, I think this is going to be my first one for 2020. Um, I definitely don't think I'm going to finish it. Like I said, I really want to take my time and really sort of uh, soak into the story. And I've heard it's kind of heartbreaking and it's going to be quite a um, an emotional... Uh, I might be an emotional wreck by the end of it, I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to it. I love the design. I love the design of the hardcover and the artwork. It just seems great. And I know, of course, uh, Rachel Thorne has done the translation, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I am going to make quite a few people jealous, I think, when I say I managed to get this copy for, I think it was less than £7. It was £6 something. I got this hard copy, and that includes shipping as well. I was overjoyed, so I don't think any Moto Hagio's work will be anywhere near as cheap as that ever again. Um, so I don't have any of her other ones and I know that I need to and I have almost purchased a few but they are expensive now, um, especially for in the UK and I do say this quite a lot, sometimes it's hard to get certain things in the UK. Um, I can find it on... Um, even in Europe it's a bit easier to find some things because France and Germany especially have quite a vibrant um, manga and comics industry and the UK is not quite um, in the same vein. We have like um, uh, gag manga and comedy ones. Scotland has its own um, and I might do a wee video on that for people to just um, educate them on that. That might be quite good. Um, but The Heart of Thomas is what I'm reading for the end of the year and the start of the year. So this is the end of my um, hashtag year end BL. The year ends with, I think, a good title. So thank you and Happy New Year.